Hello there. Today we're talking about being known. What does it mean to be known? Do you want to get known? Why would anybody want to get known? What are the benefits? And can anybody, can you or me become known? And most importantly, if we do want to become known, how do we go about getting known? I hope you'll join me in the next half hour or so so we can explore this topic together. I'm Lexi Rodrigo, content, digital content manager and consultant and a lifelong learner. And you're watching today's episode of Marketing Insights Live. Before we proceed, just some housekeeping items for you. Please remember to turn on your audio, especially if you're watching the recording of this video. Turn on the audio so you can experience this video to the best um, quality and get the most out of it. Grab a pen and paper because you will want to take notes. And even if you find just one actionable item today, then it will have been worth your while and you wouldn't want to forget that. And if you find this video helpful, I hope that you'll share it with your family and friends on social media. There is a share button somewhere around this video. And at any time, please feel free to type your questions in the comments below or on the side of this video. Even if you're watching the recording, I always go back and check for new comments so that I can respond to them. So today we're talking about becoming known and the basis for this video is the book Known by Mark Schaefer. So the title is Known, the handbook for building and lever, I cannot read. <laughs> Let me make this bigger. Building and unleashing your personal brand in the digital age. So what does it mean to be known? What is being known? Mark Schaefer says that being known is not the same as being popular. So this is how he des defines it. He says, being known is about having the proper authority, reputation, and audience to realize your potential and achieve your goals. So it's not just about being popular to a large number of people, you know, having a lot of people recognize you and know who you are, but it's really about having the authority and reputation among a group of people or an audience. So being known boils down to influence, whether you're able to influence or affect how other people think and feel and act. And if you think about that, um, in fact, uh, Mark Schaefer mentions an equity of influence. Influence nowadays has really become a, some kind of a currency. And it's, it's not just today. It has always been a kind of currency that you can spend, that you can use it, you can barter, you can use it in a, to get something that you want, um, and, and you can share, right? But the difference is that in the past, the people who had influence, influence was, I guess you could say, monopolized by people who were occupying positions of power, like political power or um, movie stars, you know, Hollywood celebrities or very famous athletes or best-selling authors. So influence was really like an exclusive um, currency only to those types of people. But the difference is that Mark Schaefer is saying, nowadays things have changed and you do not have to be any of those things and you can still get known. And in fact, in this book, Mark shares a number of case studies of seemingly ordinary people, really most of them are ordinary people um, who are becoming known and gaining influence and are able to use that influence to achieve their goals. 
So which brings us to the next question of why is it important to be known or why would anybody want to be known if they're not one of these popular people to begin with or how can being known help you to achieve your goals? Well, you know, when you're, I don't know if you are currently in business, if you are, let me know in the comments. Um, but nowadays when people think of opening a business or they already have a business and they want to attract more potential customers and buyers, one of the first things that they think of doing is creating a blog, correct? Or they open a Facebook page. And that is because we know that nowadays in order to reach a new audience or a wider audience, you have to get online. And, and that's how being known it can help you achieve your goals if you're in business. But it's not just business owners um, that can benefit from being known. In fact, in the book, Mark Schaefer shares the case of um, a person, a lady, who created uh, her own platform, I think even even while she was a student, and when she was looking for a job, having that platform, being known, helped her to find her, 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 the job that she wanted, helped her to get it, even though she was a fresh graduate and didn't have a lot of experience. So even if you're in corporate, being known can help you to achieve your goals. And I, I read this book a few months ago. I can't remember if Mark mentioned nonprofits or if there was a nonprofit in one of his case studies. I believe he mentioned somebody in the healthcare field, but I can't remember if it was a for profit or nonprofit. But having worked in nonprofits for almost two decades, I can see how being known can also benefit somebody in a nonprofit not just in terms of getting more funding, you know, um, spreading the word out and telling the stories of your beneficiaries and your organization so you can attract more donors. Um, that's one very clear way that being known can benefit a nonprofit. But also, when you're known you, and you have more influence and clout, that's when you can affect policies and you can influence social and cultural behaviors and attitudes and and create a lasting impact so you know whether you're in business private business whether you're in corporate or nonprofit being known can probably help you achieve your goals faster and more easily so the next question is how do you get known? If you're not a movie star, you're not a famous athlete, you're not a political person, and you're not a best-selling author, you're an ordinary person, how do we get known? So Mark shares four steps in this book. So let me just pause by saying hello to Marita. Hi, Marita Segal from... Texas. Hello there. I hope you're having great weather. And hi to Donna Mosher. Hi, Donna. Um, let us know where you're from. Where are you watching from? Okay, so moving on. Now we are going into the four steps of becoming known. Now, don't let the small number fool you. Just because it's only four steps does not mean that being known is easy or fast. In fact, for most people, it's quite the opposite. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of work. So let's go through the steps, shall we? The first step is finding your place. And what Mark Schaefer means by finding your place is really finding like your distinct spot that you want to occupy. So this refers to your voice, you know, um, and a sustainable interest. So a, a certain field or topic that you want to get known for. So in fact, Mark is saying, 
what do you want to get known for? That is your place. And he makes, he really emphasizes the importance of finding your sustainable topic. So you should find something that you wouldn't mind talking or writing about for years to come. Again, because getting known takes time. So if it's a subject that you think you're going to get bored with or tired with in six months, then that is not your sustainable topic. You have to keep looking. Um, so that's your place. What do you want to get be known for? In terms, so that's in terms of the subject area and your voice or your position. So that's step one. Step two is finding your space. So space refers more to your platform. Um, for example, do you want to um, be known in a blog, in your blog? Do you want to be known in a particular social media network like Facebook or LinkedIn? Do you, do you want to be known um, on YouTube through a YouTube channel? So uh, that's what is meant by space. And actually, it's not just the channel, but the niche. So which marketplace do you want to be known in? And when you're deciding on your niche or your space, um, there are important considerations to think of. And one of them is the size of the niche, the size of the space. So how big is the audience in this space? Especially if you're, you're in this for business purposes, you want the space to be big enough so that you will attract enough buyers to make your business sustainable. And, um, and also if you're a nonprofit, um, you also want a large enough space to be able to make an impact, a measurable impact, right? And um, you, you also want to look at competitors. Actually, the presence of competitors it, is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, if there are competitors, that is a good sign that the space is probably large enough to support a business. Um, but you do want to make sure that it is not overly saturated, that there is some space in that niche that you can still occupy. So the third step now is to create your fuel, and your fuel is your content. Now, becoming known online is really about creating and publishing content, because without content, then there's really no way for people to discover you online. And Mark um, recommends using rich media, creating rich media for content. And there are four kinds. So that could be a blog, that which is primarily text-based, but where you can integrate actually all different kinds of media as well. Um, there's audio through podcasting. There's video, um, as I mentioned, it could be a YouTube channel, it could be a series of videos. Um, it could be like what I'm doing right now, which is live streaming on Facebook. You can live stream on U YouTube as well um, and on Twitter. Um, or another type of rich media is images such as infographics, right? And they're now, um, animated graphics, even GIFs that are becoming very shareable. Social media images, as we know, are very shareable and they get a lot of, they can get a lot of attention and engagement. So that's your third step is to create your fuel or your content. And when you're creating your content, you need to be consistent about it. You can't blog, let's say, once a month for six months and then stop and expect to get results. Um, you have to be consistent in terms of being regular about it. So if you decide that you're going to podcast, you know, make a schedule that you, that is feasible for you, whether that's publishing a new episode every two weeks, every week, or probably every month is the least 
frequency that you can get away with because you don't want people to forget about you. So there's consistency and there's also the persistence, meaning um, you can't stop after six months because if you do, you might be giving up just when you're on the brink of having a breakthrough and actually, you know, building that audience. So you have to be committed to do it, not just regularly, but for the long haul, at least a year, two years. And if you read the case studies in the book, for some people, it's even more than two years before they get really fantastic results. And the fourth step is to build your audience. So this is about promoting your content so that other people will discover it. You can't expect to create your content and just wait, sit and wait for people to discover it. Now, I started creating content online 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago. And at the time, it was fairly easy. Like I have to say, um, I did have to do a lot of promoting and I could create a new blog and attract a lot of, of readers to it right away um, simply because, you know, there were fewer blogs back then. And so if people were looking for a specific topic, they were likely to discover my blogs. But fast forward 10 years later, that is not the case anymore. In fact, um, if you recall, previously I've mentioned Mark Schaefer because he's the one who came up with a concept of content shock, which is really the point wherein the amount of content produced um, is amount of content produced outweighs or is a lot bigger than the amount of content that people can consume. And I believe that we are already at the point of content shock today. And so you cannot create your content and sit back and expect people to find it. This so, you know, you've heard it, right? If you build it, they will come. Does not apply here. So step number four is after you create your content, you have to promote it and get eyeballs to your content. So those are the four steps of getting known. Let me just summarize for Bob. Hi, Bob. I'm glad you're here, even if you are late. <laughs> Better late than never. So to summarize, the four steps of becoming known are, first of all, define your place, what is your what do you want to get known for secondly define your space or what is the niche where do you want to get known um, the third is to create your content whether it's in the form of a blog a podcast videos or images and of course i forgot to mention that you can do create all of those different types of content but if you're just getting started and you're a one man or one woman act, you're going to want to focus on just one to begin with until such time that you can afford to hire people to help you. And step four is to build your audience, to promote your content and engage with your audience so that you are actually creating relationships with them. Now, um, what are some of the things that I like about this book. Um, if you missed it earlier, I mentioned that those four steps are from this book, Known, written by Mark Schaefer. What I like about these, this book is that it's very well written. Um, Mark is a marketing guy. He's a good writer, excellent writer. And really, the book is a pleasure to read. And I don't think I found typos, which can be annoying in books. I didn't find any here. It's very well researched. So this is definitely not a book that was written in a weekend or a week, not even in a month. It took Mark months to write this book because a lot of research went into it. Mark reached out to over a dozen content creators to find out their stories and to figure out how 
they got to where they are, how they became known, and it is by doing that that they that Mark was able to distill the process into four steps. Um, so I like that this is a very well researched book, um, and the other thing that I like is it's very actionable. So he he goes through the steps, he gives you examples, and then he tells you how you can implement that specific step. And the fourth thing that I like about this book is that there's actually a website for the book where you can go to get updates, new case studies, and bonuses. I think that any book that talks about anything related to the web, where whether it's blogging, social media, um, online videos, anything at all that has to do with the web, I think it needs to have this website for updates because the web and technology, they change so quickly that really a printed book cannot keep up. You know, an author cannot keep revising their book every year, and us, the readers, we can't keep buying <laughs> the the revised updates, you know, of the book every year either. So, a website for updates is really the perfect solution for this, and this book does have that. Um, one of the bonuses, by the way, is a spreadsheet. For, that you can use to track your results. So to give you an idea of what you can get by going to the book website. Um, now, aside from the book, there is a corresponding workbook. So it's a personal branding workbook that really goes through all the exercises that are mentioned in the book Plus more, right? So there's really, and this is really great. Like when I saw that there was a workbook, I had to buy it. And I went through it, um, but my book is still clean because what I did was I photocopied the pages and wrote on, on the photocopy because I really want to keep this clean and be able to keep going back to it and, and using it. Um, for example, how do you find your sustainable interest? There's... Uh, several exercises here, um, starting with your sense of purpose. And there's also like charts and matrices that you can create and fill in. Um, Strengths Finder. And the thing is that um, at Miracy, where I work, we did the Strengths Finder test or assessment. And so it was very interesting for me to go back to my Strengths Finder assessment and use that to define my, my place. And by the way, uh, I, I use this workbook to come up with what you're watching now, which is Marketing Insights Live. So um, that's how, you know, how useful it is. And, no, and usually I'm very hesitant about branding. In fact, that's why my website is only known as alexisrodrigo.com. And that's why I still don't have a, really a name for my business because I have a hard time coming up with one that I think that I, I'm going to be happy with for a long, long time. So there are really a lot of exercises here that will help you to really find out what it is that you want to be known for and, you know, where and and you know so there's exercises here for determining your space um yeah how to do competitive analysis now this is really helpful so that you know what you're getting into and how you can differentiate yourself um very important um and then there's a an exercise also for about the discipline of creating content because this is really something that um, not a lot of, of people mention is really how much work it is. In fact, a lot of people are selling you how easy it is and how fast, but most of the time it's not, it's not easy and it's not fast. So this is really good for, you know, a re reality check and for you to, really ask yourself, 
do I really want this? And do I, am I willing to do what is needed for me to achieve this, to, to really become known and to have an audience that know, like, and trust me enough to follow my lead, really? Um, so that is really a, a, a very important question to ask yourself. And I also really like this chart of activities to promote your content. So this is for step four, for building an audience based on your audience goals. Like what size of an audience do you want? Um, and it says that uh, if you want a small audience, less than 1,000 people, you probably have to spend one and a half hours per week to promote your content. And he goes through like specific things that you can do month one, month two, up to 12 months. Um, although I, I I don't agree that, you know, if you want a bigger audience, that means that you necessarily have to set aside more time because I think that aside from time, there's money, right? So if you have time, depending on if you have time or money, um, now if you want a larger audience and you don't have a lot of time, you can always throw money at it, Right. For any problem, you can always throw money at any problem. So it's really a matter of do you have more time or do you have more money that you can use to build your audience? So realistically, you're, he's saying that you're going to have to spend about five hours a week to become known. Okay, that's to become known. A minimum of five hours per week. So out of those five hours, three hours are for creating your content. One hour is for content promotion and distribution, and one hour for engaging with your audience and the other influencers in your niche. So that's a very important thing to um, keep in mind if you're thinking of doing this, whether it's for business, for your career, or for your nonprofit. And then there's a page where you can summarize your plan to become known. So, yeah, so that's it. Um, I highly recommend, you know, if you have a blog or you're starting or thinking of starting a blog, a podcast, a YouTube channel, you're thinking of doing Facebook Live or um, I'm forgetting the other live streaming. What is it? Any, you know, or starting an Instagram account even um, in order to support your business or your nonprofit or your career, I definitely recommend that you buy and read the book and the workbook, um, you know, because this is really, this is the way to do it. This is the way to succeed. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to know just step by step, what do you need to do? And even if you already have an existing platform where you're trying to build an audience, but you're not quite getting the results that you want, then again, read this book, get the workbook. And, um, you know, because that's really going to tell you what you need to do more of, or maybe certain things that you need to change, shifts that you need to make in order to achieve your, your goals. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, any questions? Let's look at the chat and see. Okay, Marita has a question. When starting out, what would be a low cost way to promote my content? So I'm glad that you asked this question because I forgot to mention that um, Mark actually covers both paid and non-paid ways to promote your content. So let's just take a look at that table of activities for audience building. Uh, if, if you don't want to spend money, really the lowest cost ways to promote your content are networking, meaning even face-to-face -face, in-person networking, you know, attending networking events where you can tell people about your blog or your whatever plot platform you're using. It can also be social media networking, networking 
um, through Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and so on. Of course, social media marketing is free and you can promote your content that way as well. Um, one of my favorite ways to promote your content is guest blogging. It's a lot of work, but it's really very effective. If you don't have your audience, your own audience yet, guest blogging is an excellent, excellent way to build your own audience, to attract audiences from other people's websites. Another way is to get interviewed all over the place, get interviewed on people's podcasts, um, get interviewed on people's videos. Like occasionally I interview people on uh, Marketing Insights Live. So yeah, those are some low cost, no cost ways to promote your content. Let's see if uh, there's anything else here. Of course, search engine optimization is low cost or no cost. Um, you have to have a keyword strategy, you know, and you can Google how to do this. Do um, some keyword research and come up with a list of keywords that are related to your topic, to your sustainable interest, and that, that um, you can reasonably rank for. There are still keywords that don't have a lot of competition for, and you can create content around those keywords and have the search engines bring you traffic and promote your content that way. Um, what else? Another way is reaching out to influencers. For example, um, find the other blogs that are, or podcasts, you know, blogs that are related to yours. And then when you create content that might be useful to their audience, then feel free, you can reach out to them and tell them about your blog post or infographic or video, whatever it is that you created. And by the way, infographics, um, I find that it's easier to promote infographics this way rather than just blog posts. Like personally, as a blog editor, when I receive an email from someone saying, hey, we just published this blog post and I think your audience will like it, I don't tend to use it. But if they send me a really good infographic, then I'm more likely to share the infographic or even create a blog post out of that. Um, yeah, so, uh, so as you can see, there are a lot of low cost ways that you can promote your content. And of course, nowadays, even paid ads like Facebook ads are, can be very reasonably priced. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars. Like if you had a hundred dollars a month to spend on, on that, you can experiment with that as well. But, you know, I encourage you if budget is an issue, you know, ex exhaust all the low cost, no cost strategies first, because, you know, why spend if you don't have to, and especially if budget is tight. Okay. Um, yeah, that is all the questions that I am seeing right now. So if you want to get the book and the workbook, you can find them on my Amazon shopping page. That's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Lexi Rodrigo. I just added the book and the workbook on that page. Whoops. Okay, so go here, go here. <laughs> I just added these books there. Um, and you also see all the other books that I, I have read and recommend as well as equipment that I use and like. So I hope that you will check that out. Okay. Um, Kim is saying hi. Hi, Kim. I'm so glad to see you again. Yeah. So just remember if you have any questions, whether you're watching this live and even if you're watching the recording, just type your questions in the comments. I will go back to them and respond. So thank you guys for joining me again in today's episode of Marketing Insights Live. I hope it has been useful. And if you had an aha moment, do share what you learned in the comments so that others can benefit as well. And that will help me to know if I'm on the right track with these live videos or not. 
So thanks again for your time and attention. And I will not be seeing you next week because I will be traveling. I'll be out of town and I will not be able to do this because I don't know what my schedule will be. I'm so sorry about that, but we will be meeting again in the future. So in the meantime, have a good week, everyone. Take care.